Podcasts are pretty common. So what makes the Uncommon Podcast uncommon? Well, it's all in our name. I'm your host, Noah Weiss, and we at Uncommon Sports Group understand the unique pressures and temptations that come with a career in the sport industry. We provide Uncommon training that helps you successfully navigate common challenges. Hit the follow button on this podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Check out our website and become Uncommon. What's up, USG fam? Welcome back to The Uncommon Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Noah Weiss, and I'm very excited to welcome someone I'm sure some of our listeners are already familiar with, Minnesota Timberwolves player development coach Moses Ihambi, onto the show today. Before he was Coach Ihambi, Moses played Division I college basketball at Oral Roberts University, as well as playing professionally in the NBA, the NBA G League, and with multiple organizations overseas. Since he began his career as a coach, Moses has coached at the collegiate level with his alma mater, or or Roberts, as well as the professional level with the Indiana Pacers and, of course, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Moses, I appreciate you joining me today. Absolutely, Noah. Most definitely. Whenever you get a request from a a guy named Noah, you know, you got to take that. Yes, sir. (laughs) Amen. 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 Moses, obviously, as I mentioned in the intro, you are a decorated athlete and obviously a successful coach as well. But I want to start with the most important aspect of who you are, and that's your relationship with Christ. Tell me about the the testimony of how you came to know Jesus in that period in your life when you started following him. Great question, man. Great question. Um, I, I really don't have a horror story. You know, God kept me in my youth and I give him all of the glory. My father's a minister, so mm. I grew up in the church. Church was my it was in my DNA. Christianity was in my DNA, you know. Um, so uh, with growing up, I was also in, in, the, in the in the what do you call it? The worship team. Uh, so I played the drums. So I had to be at every single service um, because we always started off with worship or whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. And to the point that it just it kind of got it kind of got annoying, you know. Well, not annoying, but like old. Like I'm young and I'm like ah, I want to go to this party with my friends. I want to go hang out, yeah. go to the movies, and everything. Yeah. But I can't because I got to be at church, mm-hmm. you know. So it, it started to become. I, I loved God, um, um, and and people could sense it and feel it off of me and whatnot. Um, but it just it was more so a routine rather than a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but that brings me to but once I got recruited to go play basketball at Oral Roberts University. Um, that's where my faith just became my own. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's where um, that sort of routine aspect kind of turned into sort mm-hmm. of a relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's that there was a, a pivotal moment in my life. Um, once I realized that, yo, my faith is my own. It's not my pops, mm. it's not my mom. You yeah. know, they. I remember uh, vaguely just, just them um, uh, waking up every morning and praying out loud and singing and worshiping, and they were covering us, you know, mm. um, with the spirit or whatnot. And um, I w- got to college, and then it's like silent in the morning. Like, yo, there's no praying. There's no, you know what I'm saying? Mm, it's yeah. like, man, I, I probably should get up and, and pray. You know, yeah. and, and pray for my day and pray for, you know, and, and bless the Lord. Uh, but once I started um, doing that and, and kind of implementing myself at the university, which is a Christian university, if, if um, people don't know, yeah. um, I just, my, my life just turned around and I started getting on fire for God in a sense. Mm. It's awesome to hear, Moses. I, I love how you mentioned that you made your faith your own. I think that's something a lot of young people can struggle with is is making that their own and and taking yeah. what was their families or their parents or their grandparents and saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to really trust in God myself. And so I think that's that's pivotal. And Moses, you also mentioned that you really came to understand that your faith was your own as you were playing basketball at the college level. And certainly it's obvious based on your, your career choice as well as your, your time playing that basketball has played a pivotal role in your life. And so my question is, when did you realize that coaching the game was, was going to be your, your path that you pursued full time? Man, so it's uh, when I while I was playing professionally, uh, my wife and I always we would always talk like, "Yo, when you're done playing basketball, when I'm done playing basketball, I'm done. I'm not going to um, not going to be around the sport. Um, to, you know, I'm just going to go and go wherever God wants me to go. You yeah. know, and, 
And lo and behold, <laughs> it's coaching, you know? Amen. I really do feel like my purpose in life is to encourage, to motivate, and to inspire, mm. you know? Um, and coaching gives me the opportunity to do so. Not only am I coaching on a um, uh, athletic platform, uh, these the uh, players, but I also do perform um, uh, executive perfor- sorry executive performance coaching as well, yeah. sort of like personal development coaching. Yeah. Um, and that just lights me up on fire because it awesome. gives me an opportunity to do those to do those things, walk in my purpose mm-hmm. in, in regards to encouraging, motivating, and inspiring. So um, I'm, I'm having a blast doing it. Yeah. Uh, and it's all about you know equipping others and helping others be the very best version of themselves. Um, and I'm given by, by God's grace the opportunity to do so. So that's amazing, brother. I, I love how you just shared your passion for it. You know, I think that's sometimes what people miss is they're pursuing this career and they're they're going after it, right? And they're like, man, I want to be where Moses is, working for the NBA, working for the Timberwolves, and coaching <laughs> these guys. But it's like, if you don't have that passion, you're going to struggle to be in it for the long haul because the hours, yeah. you, the hours you grind, the travel schedule that I'm sure you'll talk about later, and. It's, it, it's cool to hear that you have a passion for it and you, you were inspired to do it well. And, you know, Moses, I think what's hard for young people who are listening who think, man, the NBA is my goal, is how did Moses do it? How, how did he get in the door? And so I'd love for you to share, how did you break into this league that, that so often can seem like such a lofty goal for a lot of young professionals? So when you think about breaking in, it's a lot of like effort, right? Yeah. Like you got you to gotta go and grind and you got to um, put the... the, the uh, the little device in the door, kind of break in there. I think my story is a, um, a bit different, yeah. you know. Um, by God's grace, He placed me in the NBA. Mm. You know, um, I remember my first call um, with one of the coaches, Coach Nate Bjorkman. Um, I was coaching at my alma mater, you know, at Old Roberts University, and I'm first year coach, you know, loving it and whatnot. And I get a call uh, from Coach Nate, and he's like, "Hey, what did he call me, boxer? Hey, boxer, what are you doing, man?" Um, I'm like, hey, I'm living my dream. I'm at my alma mater. And I'm coaching and just living the best life. He was like, hey, how would you like to coach in the NBA? And immediately I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Are you serious right now? He's like, yeah. yes. And one thing that he continued to harp on is, man, I want good people around me. Mm. You know, I want hard workers around me. Um, and that's one thing that you have like 110%. Yeah. You work hard and you love people and you're a good person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want that a part of my organi- uh, our organization. So um, lo and behold, he, he offered him and the GM and the president offered me an, uh, a contract and whatnot. And I had to tell the university that I was going yeah. to the NBA, sort of like a call up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, like, yeah, like literally a call up, you know, in the G League, I never got a call up, yeah. you know, uh, but hey, I got one. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. That's Praise, awesome. Praise God. Um, but he gave me a call, did that. And you know, I was in the NBA. And once I got into the NBA, by God's grace, just, you know, that, that, um, the scripture, um, Ooh, where is it at? Your gifts will make room for you mm. and place you in front of great people. Amen. Right. Yes. And as they place you, as it places you, places you in front of great people, like the world is your oyster. It's like, mm. you know, fireworks, right? Yes. The Lord allowed my gift to make room for me, my work ethic, my, my love for people, my, um, my uh, my my desire to help people grow right mm. it's my gift yeah. and he he allowed it to make room for me and he, he placed it in front of great people mm. gms presidents of basketball operations um head coaches assistant coaches he placed me there and as he did like those giftings just continue to grow mm. you know um and i've continued to work hard and different things like that but that's that's how it happened you mm. know it, it it wasn't so much of oh my Dude, I'm gonna go make this call. I'm gonna fight to get to here and do it. That just wasn't my story, yeah. you know. And I'm extremely grateful, you know. And it showed a lot of faith too. Um, I don't know if people really know my story, story like the way I ended playing basketball. My goal has always been to be an NBA to play. Mm. I got a sip of tea playing with the Pelicans in tra- yeah. training camp. Or um, but then I got cut, you know. Mm. Um, but getting cut and having that taste, it's like, man, I want to get back. I want to get back. God, you know, you said you'll give me the desires of my heart, mm. right? And um, so I'm like, God, come on, come on. I'm a work, I'm a workaholic when yeah. I was a player, you know, to the point where coaches had to like, Moses, you can't shoot today. You got to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was still That's a good thing. In That's a no good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it just, it got to a point where it's like, God, I don't want to make it to the NBA, you know? So I kept on playing. 
you know okay overseas it's away from the nba a little bit but i could still make it you know mm. so i kept going and it wasn't until my last season in russia um Sakhalin island it's like yeah uh, 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 island right off of russia yeah um, i'm playing the best ball i've ever played in my entire career wow and then in there it's like okay god i see it we're about to make it let's do it <laughs> praise god yeah and all of a sudden i feel in my spirit moses i need you to be done mm. and immediately i was like no no this can't be god mm. this is this is not it i can't do this no you know um but lo and behold i just i kept feeling it and when you when you hear something from the lord when you feel something from the lord it's like you can't you can't turn back like you can't yeah. like i like look at jonah yeah. jonah yeah. was like go to nineveh no nah, i'm gonna do something <laughs> and then what happened to nineveh he got um, not what happened to Jonah. He got um, swallowed up in the whale. Yeah. Uh, but lo and behold, he ended up doing what God called him to do. Amen. Um, so whenever I got that word, it was like, man, okay, let's go. It was tough, though, because yeah. I had five kids. It's how I'm making a living. I wanted to make it to the NBA. But I was like, I need you to be done. Mm. Trust me, even when it doesn't make sense. Mm. You know, yeah. um, uh, uh, Obey me, even when you don't understand. Amen. And watch what I will do for you. Yeah. Right? So I did it. And then all of a sudden, once I said bye to all my agent thought I was crazy, fans thought I was crazy. My mm. wife didn't think I was crazy because she knew yeah. wherever wherever the Lord leads, you go because that's yes. where the presence of God will be and He will make a way. Amen. You know. Amen. Um, so we walked that walk, and I was done with ball, and then I get a call from the athletic director mm. at, at Old Roberts University. He offers me a job. I had to work for that. He wow. offers me a job. Wow. Um, and then you know that led to being an assistant coach mm. on the basketball team, um, and then. That leads to Coach Nate giving me a call. Wow! <laughs> um, in the so NBA, amazing. you know, and then lo and behold, that just it just it just happens, man. Mm. It happens. It Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge me. Mm. Trust me. Trust that I know what I'm doing, yeah. and I will direct your paths. I will make a way for you, mm. right? And it's exactly what he's been doing. That's that's that right there is um, that's that's like the definition of my my career. <laughs> love that Proverbs 3 5 and 6 I love that Moses I, I love that yeah. I love that testimony I think what really inspires me Moses is you talk a lot about the grace of God you talk a lot about how scripture and then the spirit was leading you to where you you were going in your career and I think for our listeners when I asked that question they probably expected you to give a five-step plan of here's how you get to the NBA here's how you make it here's what I did in my five-step yeah. plan and that's just not how you went about it. And I love that because there is no five-step plan. There is no one-way track to make it, right? It's You have to be there because God wants you there. Right? Trust yeah. in what he wants for you. And so I love that about your story. It's it's encouraging to me to hear that from you, that it's the grace of God and nothing else. It's amazing. I can, amen, amen, bro. And you know what? I can could, I, I could actually give you a five-step plan, right? I can. <laughs> I would if love you to think hear about, it. Um, if you think about the story of David killing Goliath, yeah. how many stones did he pick up? I think one. Was it, I, no, I, no. Was he, it five? The text tells us it was five. Man, I believe so. Let's it go. Was five. So let's, let's go, go. Let's go with this five-step plan to to reaching success or um, accomplishing your goals or your dreams, your aspirations. Right. Step number one is trust. Mm. Trusting God, even when it doesn't make sense. Mm. Step number two is is um, obey. Obey God even when you don't understand it. Mm. Right. Yes. Um, step number three. Surround yourself with support. There's things you want to do, right? So, so sometimes you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, you gotta have people around you that equip you, that speak life into you, that mm. that help carry you uh, along the way. There's a story that I always tell in regards to this support um, piece. Moses, whenever when whenever the Israelites were um, about to fight the Amalekites, um, Mo Moses asked God, "God, this army is so big and strong." We need you. What mm. do we have to do in order to be successful? God was like, I want you to walk up this mountain and I want you to get up there and I want you to lift up your arms. And when you lift up your arms, <laughs> watch what I do, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if it was me and I was the head of my army, I was like, man, I want to be on the front line with my people. Right. You know what I'm saying? But God, most of us like, you know what? I don't care. Mm. Even if I don't understand, I'm going to obey. Amen. Even when it doesn't make sense, I'm going to trust. So he Amen. walked up. But when he walked up and he did what God said to do, his, the, um, the Israelites were beating the Amalekites. But what happens when your arms get down? Um, mm. When your arms are up for so long, they get tired. Yeah. They start to come down. Yeah. The text tells us when his arms came down, the, um, the Amalekite army started to beat 
they were starting to defeat the Israelite army. Wow. The text also tells us that Moses had two people up on that mountain with him, mm. Aaron and Ur, up there with him. And when Aaron and Ur noticed, it, noticed that those arms were going down, they were like, and they noticed that they were losing. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We got to help him. So the text yeah. tells us that he, they lifted up his arms and they put a rock under his butt so he could rest. Mm. Then the Israelite army started winning. Okay, wow. but that shows you the power of support. Yeah. It's, in order for us to be successful and do what we want to do and accomplish what we want to accomplish, we have to have support mm. to lift us that way. Um, that way. Step number four, stone number uh, four to success is your words. Mm. Whatever you speak will happen, right? Mm. If there's life and death behind what we speak. Whatever we say is going to happen. So profess what you want, right? Mm. Speak what you want to see, right? Then number five, the last one is huge. As a man thinketh, so is he. Mm. It's all about your thought process. That's so good. Right? Yeah. It, it, that is what keeps you going. Stuff around us can happen. Yeah. Right? But once you think what you want, bro, watch out. Lo and behold. I want you to do something for me real quick, Noah. Yeah. I want you to start I want you to start verbalizing. Um uh well I can do it twofold. I want you to start verbalizing um your ABCs. I said A, B, C, D. And I'm going to give you another instruction as you're saying it. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Now I want you to think well, you're one through ten as you're, as you're okay. speaking. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. What's your thought process? Man, I'm just, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking about the number. It's locked in the middle. It's like... It's almost like I pictured the alphabet and like I was holding the five above. I was thinking five and I was holding it above everything yeah. else. That's crazy. It, right? That's but crazy. But it, it can also be in reverse, bro. You can be thinking something, right? But as you're thinking something, you then you start speaking something, your focus starts to be what you're, what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah. It, show, it just shows how important it is that we are speaking life into our situation. So we are true. thinking life into our situation yeah. right <laughs> so 100%. The, the five steps trust obey support surround yourself with it yeah. um think and speak 100 percent. Moses. that's a great five and that's step all plan. for free brother that's all for, <laughs> <laughs> that's all for free no, I, I love that moses and, and i think for our listeners right it's like you you have to just rely on the lord when you're seeking a career whether it be in sports or otherwise because if, if you're not being guided by the spirit you're, you're doing it on your own, right? And it's for you. It's mm -hmm. not for other people. And, and I think that's when we, we truly lose sight of the purpose. And when you lose sight of the purpose and the why, you, you start to miss the mark of, of being successful because you're not doing it for something other than just you or the, or the money, right? And so absolutely, I, I love that. I love that five-step plan. I'm, I'm going to write that down. I'm saving that one. That's, plan, a, baby. <laughs> that, that's a good one. And Moses, on the same topic, really, I mean, working in this league that you're in, it has blessings, right? But it also has some challenges. And one of those challenges I'm sure that you're facing is living out your faith in, in an organization or in a, in a league that often doesn't have the same shared beliefs. So how, yeah. do, how do you navigate that? How do you go about living out what you believe in, in a space where that, that may not be as prevalent? Mm. In God's word, it says, they will know you are my children by your fruit, mm. right? Yeah. I want people to know that, like, Moses touched me. Mm. Like, Moses impacted me. Moses, um, um, he did something. People don't, people remember what you do for them, but more, more, more so they remember how you make them feel. Yes. Moses made me feel like I was the most important person mm. in the world. Moses loved me, right? That's so good. And I say this because I want my fruit to just speak so loud mm. that that people 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 don't even hear what I say. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They want I want my actions to speak so loud that people do not know what I'm like they can't hear what I'm saying. Mm. Like that's the fruit and I think yeah. that there does something for people and they know that man the light that you have is mm. it's it's from something yeah. it's from something and then, and hopefully it kind of pulls mm. them towards you know our messiah it pulls them towards our, our god yes. you know um and then when when, when, a, when a player or a, a coach or a, 
uh, front office exec or whatever, when mm. they show that they're they're God fearing and they start asking questions and then mm. they start, then that's when that's like yeah. that's like the alley oop. Yep. You know, that the Lord throws. And then you got to yeah. go catch that and rock that thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I'm not one to just be all like on a soapbox and just, you know, um, because that I mean that could be effective. But I've learned that it's 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 more effective to go about it the way that I've uh, that I've, I've gone about it. You know, Absolutely. and, you know, you get you get some pushback and different things like that. You know, totally. if you um, come out a little bit too hard or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, that's that's just that's been my experience. I love that Moses. I, I love that because I, I think the way you think about the way Jesus lived, the way he he went about his life, is he would heal people, and he talks about how people lined up right that that would come and yep. want, want to be healed, and a lot of those people didn't believe he was God, and, and they truly didn't understand why he was there, but he was still the fruit of his love was still there, right? And, and at the right times, he he would go about sharing and and conversing. But if you notice, like even the story of Zacchaeus in Luke nineteen. You know, the first thing that Jesus doesn't do is like say, hey, Zacchaeus, you're a tax collector and a sinner. You need to repent right now. He was like, no, hey, hey, Zacchaeus, I want to go eat with you, man. You free tonight? Like, oh, it's, let's go. it's crazy. <laughs> like, we, we often just miss that love that Jesus had. He's like, ah, Zacchaeus, I know yeah. you, man. Let's just go have a meal. And then after that meal and that fruit, Zacchaeus repented and he, he paid back all his debt, right? And so it's like, Amen. man, like, that, I love that because it's so biblical. It's, it's so rooted it's in who, so in who Jesus was. So I, I love that response. In the, Bible, in the Bible, it tells us, bro, that we're never going to be perfect. Yeah. There's no one perfect yeah. but Jesus. Amen. Right? But our job is to strive to be more and more like Jesus. So if mm. that's our job, like, why not do what you just did, yeah. you know, th that you just told us in regards to, like, Zacchaeus and AJ? That's, that's so good. Love. Love, yeah. love, 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 love. Out, out love. Hmm. Amen, Moses. Amen. And, yep. you know, Moses, I think one thing that's amazing about your role, and you, you mentioned this earlier, is your, your opportunity to impact other people, right? Whether it be staff around you, uh, and most importantly, players, right? You're in a player development role. That's your job is to de develop players as athletes and as, as individuals. And so how have you equipped yourself? I'm sure the question many people are asking is, hey, Moses, like, I'm a young guy. I want to coach. I don't feel like I have the knowledge or the skills right now to, to coach an NBA player. So how have you gone about equipping yourself to teach these guys that are the best players in the world to be even better? Staying in shape. Mm -hmm. I think the best teacher, uh, one of the best teaching is whenever you can go out there and actually do what you're talking about. Right. You know, that gives me sort of an edge. Um, geez. I, I, I go spiritual with it too, mm, dude. Like yeah. I, I kid you not before every PD session, every practice, every even conversation, every film mm. session I have with my guys. It's like, I, I pray, Holy spirit. I pray that you may be my mouthpiece. Holy spirit. I pray that you may be my mindset in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And when I do that, it gives God like, man, it's just not me. It's yeah. none of me, mm. all of you. And it Amen. gives sort of the, the, the Holy Spirit permission to mm. step in. And dude, I kid you not, every time I've prayed that prayer, like it just amazing us. Um, I remember doing the, the same thing my very first year um, play, uh, coaching in the NBA at Indiana. Um, it was, I was a bit nervous. Like I I just went from coach. So I coached, stepped in eighth grade basketball, <laughs> coached at uh, Old Roberts University, yeah. or University, high school. So, Seventh and eighth grade basketball, high school basketball, and um, D one basketball in a span of a year, wow. right? Yeah. And that's all I had. That's that's the experience that I had. Now mm. I have the experience of being a player and being in it for right. uh, a minute and whatnot. But then when I get to the NBA, it's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just got done coaching milk money. Yeah. Now I'm coaching millionaires. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it has to be like, okay, what are we gonna do? So I, with that being said, I, I got a little bit like nervous in a sense totally but once i start praying that prayer the lord could start opening up my doors giving me ideas different things that i used to do whenever i was doing pd for myself and my my, my teammates and different things like that and um going back to film what i saw as a player different things like that all of that came into fruition um and it came together and it just magic happened you know mm. so so i would say spiritually just saying that prayer or whatnot and then my experience um um and I mean, really, and, and staying in shape and being able to do what yeah. I teach, 
but then also just confidence. Mm. Like I know I'm, I, I know I'm not the best coach out there. I, I know I'm not, you know, but mm. at the same time, God has placed me through different situations and through different, um, um, just different mess to mend and mold me for this moment. Wow. Right. So yeah. you got to walk in there with confidence, knowing I'm here for a reason, yeah. just like Queen Esther for yeah. a moment such as this. Right. Mm, <laughs> but yes. You got to walk in there with confidence and might knowing that, okay, God placed me here. Let's roll. Amen. So Cause good. guys, guys can sniff when you don't, when they think you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Confidence. And when that happens, it's no dice in the NBA. You lose them. You lose them. And, yeah. and, and on that point, Moses, I, I wanted to ask you, I feel like one of the most challenging parts of being a coach at the level you're at is it's a business, right? And guys are in and out of the yeah. door. There's players getting traded, right? For example, a player on the Timberwolves this season got, got cut mid-season and a guy that you coached and, and you yeah. lost him, right? And now, now he's gone. Yeah. And so my question to you is how do you go about developing real relationships in, in the league where guys – may not want to build those relationships and or are getting cr- traded or cut or, or, or released from the team? You know, guys are at that point, like in the NBA, you have guys that are like the point where it's like, man, I, I don't want to trust anybody. I know I could be gone like right yeah. now, you know. And um, So with that being said, and also myself being in a, a situation like that before, it's like, man, all I can do is love. Yeah. I want them to feel that I care for them. Mm-hmm. I want them to feel that this is not a business. This is more so um, an opportunity for growth for you, yes. right? I, I want you to, okay, basketball, yes, that's the main focus, but what about these other folks? Yeah. You know, life, how you doing? How's your family? How's, how's your, your, if you're a believer, what's, how's your spiritual life? How is it, how can I help you? How can mm-hmm. I serve you? Like when I go out to dinner with guys, like I, I try to, to pay for the dinner. Like I don't mm-hmm. want them, because they're getting, ripped and like pulled and can you do this can you do this for me like no here i'm gonna pay for this dinner tonight mm. you know um and what that does it does something for guys like it it, it, it makes them feel valued valued and loved and you know and i think that's that's the one um that's the one thing that that kind of um gives us that advantage and moses really on a similar note i, I want to talk more about your development right you've been in the league now for a number of years coaching at the pacers and the timberwolves <laughs> What has your time in the NBA really taught you about coaching? How have you grown as an individual and in, in a coach? Man, preparation, hmm. um, processes, um, work ethic, uh, uh, repetition, hmm. you know, and uh, uh, some of these things I've, I've learned while I was a player. But once you get up here on the other side, it's like, man, it's more so. Like, it's even more, even more. Like, people are trying to defeat you and your players, hmm. right? So we need an advantage. What are some other things we can do? Like yeah. uh, just broaden your thinking and different mm. things like that. So um, attention to detail, uh, just just a lot, man. A lot have I, that I, I've learned a lot, and I'm just constantly growing. Yeah. And I, I think that there actually the 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 willingness to know that you're not, you have not arrived, mm. and you're, you want to constantly grow. There is this um, what is it? The wolf climbing up the mountain is more hungry than the wolf on top of the mountain. Amen. Right? Because the wolf on top of the mountain, he's content. He's that's which is poison. He feels like, oh, I made it to the top of the mountain. I'm good. Hmm. Nah. Because that wolf that's coming up the mountain, he's even more hungry than you were when you were at that point. Right. Hmm. And once he gets here, he's not gonna stop. Yeah. So just having that mentality, that wolf, that wolf climbing the mountain mentality has really given me um just room to to just want to grow and want to get better and want to ask questions and, you know, and do research and different things like that. So good, Moses. That is so good. And really, I think I I was just thinking as you were talking, like a lot of young people just have their sights set on a certain team, a certain league, right? Coaching a certain player. And it's like, if I can only get to the Lakers or if I can only get to X, Y, (laughs) Z, right, then I I would be there. Right. But it's like, man, the best of the best never arrive. Right. And, and I think that's that's so true, especially when we're doing it for Christ. It's like we've never done enough. Like it, you don't wake up one day like I've prayed enough or I've served God enough. Like you, you really never get to that point. You don't arrive in that area. And so yeah. I, I love that point because we're, we're always we're always grinding. We're always striving to, to be better people and better at our craft. I, I couldn't agree. Absolutely. More. Couldn't agree more. Hands and, down, brother. Yeah. Amen. And and I'd say too, Moses, a, a challenge you face that that a lot of. I think coaches that are younger don't face, but could potentially face in the future is you are a, a husband, 
and you are a father to seven children. And so my question to you is, how do you balance being the father that you are, being the husband that I'm sure you are, as, as well as being the coach and, and, and leader that you are in, in your role um, in, in, in the NBA? Who? I got seven kids? That's a, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> I do, baby. Yes, we're loving, you do. You know, um, thankfulness, gratefulness, thankful that I have a beautiful wife 13 years. Mm. Thankful that I have seven beautiful children. Praise you God. know, and I see my children as like like arrows in my quiver, mm. right? Arrows that I'm, I get the opportunity to sharpen because sooner than later, boom, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, having a mindset that man i i I, i'm blessed you know god has trusted me with seven kiddos two sets of identical twins right identical twins one in itself is like rare yeah but i'm like a like a rarity like god is like you know here moses you know and to 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 see it that way it's like man i'll do whatever it takes to to make sure that they are good to make sure that their mindset is right to make sure that they feel loved, mm. to make sure they feel important, valued, and special, mm. right? And that's for, to, for my wife and for my kids. Um, and uh, I, what I do to sort of balance all that is just having a, a strong mindset, just yeah. having a mindset of, man, thankfulness, a mindset of, man, I have to cherish these things. So in order to do so, I have to be intentional. Yeah. I got to be intentional with going on little dates with my little kiddos, mm-hmm. uh, seven kids. I gotta take. I gotta take each and each of them. They need their their separate daddy time. That's why after yeah. this call, I'm going to throw the football with my son. Yeah. Right. Uh, I remember one day before our youngest twins, uh, Abraham and Solomon. Um, I took every kid on a date on the one day. That's awesome. Right? We basically all went to Sam's Club. Right. <laughs> our home was like maybe three minutes from Sam's Club. So I took one one kiddo, drove to Sam's Club. We started talking, different things. Got there, had ice cream, ate it, came back home. Picked up the other kid, got in the car, same thing. Ice cream, been back home. Then like back and forth five times. And it took maybe uh close to an hour and a half or something like that. But it was such Good a time. powerful moment. Mm. It was a it was powerful moments mm. because they felt like they were so special, yeah. especially the last of the the baby. Mm-hmm. She was like, get, do I get to go on one too, Dad? And I, I really had to get like film done or something like that. And I was like, you know what? This is what matters most. Mm. So I went and I took her. It was shorter than usual, but at least she got to take that ride, get ice cream and eat it on the way back and different things like that. Yeah. You know, and the kiddos remember that. Right. And just even with my wife and, and just spending time with her and making her feel like like a, a million bucks, you know, mm. like this time right now in the off season, I'm, I've been given the opportunity to be home. Like I'm home and I'm like, mom, I'm like, a dad mom i'm cooking dinner i'm picking up kids i'm mm. taking kids wherever they need to go I, i'm cleaning i'm it's it's amazing mm. it's amazing and it's it my, our wives they need that you yes. know it's just that intentional act of baby you're on vacation five yeah. weeks you're on vacation baby i got everything let's go yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. um and then also the intentionality piece is like for my 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 vocation like mm. i have to be intentional with i gotta set this time aside to get my work done Mm. Right. Because this work is it, it, it matters, you know, yeah. in a sense. But I think that that mindset of intentionality kind of it's mm. it's taking me uh, it's been taking me places. So it's amazing, Moses. And really, it's a, it's a good learning point for so many of our listeners is it does take sacrifice, right, to be in a marriage and to be a parent. And, and certainly that's something you touched on so well. I thought of the words uh, sacrifice and service when you were sharing. I, I think it does take a level of selfless sacrifice to be that yep. kind of parent, to be that kind of husband and, and service, right? Like you're supposed to serve in, in your job, right? As a coach, but also when you come home, you still have a job to serve and, and be that parent <laughs> and that husband that's supposed to be there. Okay. And so it, I just love that conversation because our listeners will face that one day, right? Of some yep. level of a relationship or a marriage that, that they'll be a part of um, and, and, and potentially kids if God provides. And, and I think that the challenge of that in the sport industry is unique to to other industries, and I appreciate you sharing because it's a it's a great lesson for our listeners. One hundred percent. Absolutely, you're more than welcome. And Moses, similar to my last question, you have your your personal family and you have your church family, and, and I just wanna I wanna pose the question to you: How do you navigate working in this industry, but also maintaining a relationship with the local church? I feel like that's got to be such a challenge with with how busy you are in the travel. Dude, it, it's a challenge if you make it a challenge, Yeah, you know, but it becomes, it becomes sweet and amazing 
whenever you see it that way, especially when you have a community mm. like I have. Mm. So I attend Everyday Church, um, Everyday Minneapolis, yeah. uh, pastored by Josh and Katie Crable. Um, and they are just, that, that place just filled with the Spirit. It's amazing. Mm. And the way that they kind of, they, they brought my, fam- my family in. You know, they asked my wife and I to be to be deacons at the church as well, which was a special honor. Wow. But in order to like for them to do that, you know, it's just very sweet. And it shows that the connection that we have um, with the community um, and, and, you know, the c- community is the, the church is just everybody is just so, so helpful, and loving and kind. You know, yeah. when you have that, it's like, man, I want to go to church. I can't wait to get I can't wait to get there and, and get fed and different things like that. Mm. Um, working in the NBA. I learned quickly um, when I was in Indiana. Um, you don't you don't get to go to church as much. <laughs> yeah, you know. So there's a lot of streaming. There's a lot of chapel services, which the NBA does a fantastic job with. Mm. Um, every single game, sixty on the clock, there's chapel. You That's know, great. in the back, you being able to do that and whatnot. Um, but my, it, it, as I mentioned before, support is huge, and mm-hmm. having a community like I have at um, Everyday Minneapolis, it makes everything a lot easier. Mm. It's amazing. It's amazing, Moses. Yeah. And, and really, what I want our listeners to to learn from that is it is possible, right? You, you oh, may yeah. not you may not have perfect attendance. You may not be serving as much as you would like based on your schedule and responsibilities. But it is possible. And really, that support system is so key, right? Because you, you have your family, you have your your work people. But who's really your your church community? Who's that family? I think of Acts mm-hmm. chapter two. Uh, verses 42 through 47, when it talks about how they met in the temple every day and they encouraged one another and they broke bread together and they and they were devoted to the apostles' teaching and to the prayers together, right, as a body. And, and I think if we don't have that and you're riding this Christian life solo, um, it, it's going to be challenging and, and you're going to struggle to truly find that deep intimacy with God because you don't have that communal aspect. So I appreciate you sharing. I think that's an elemental part of anybody's walk with Christ is that local church family. It's really well said. Absolutely. Amen. And lastly, Moses, I would, just, I would love to have you share some advice to our listeners. If they're trying to be, whether it's coaches or, or just placed in somewhere in the sport industry, what advice would you give them as they're getting started in their careers? Mm, good question. Two words. Keep going. Mm. Keep going. Like when you're traveling on the road, Right. You're, you're, you're traveling, but sometimes you hit a pothole, mm. right? Sometimes there's an accident. Sometimes you're you're in traffic, right? Sometimes um, your car breaks down. Sometimes, But what happens? Keep going. You keep going. Keep going. You just keep going. Stuff is going to happen in your life that you wish did you, it did not happen, mm. right? What are you going to do about it? It's all about how you respond. Not, for, not per se how you react. Right? How do you respond? Right. Um, And you have the opportunity to respond in a way that um, helps to further your career Mm. or keep you in that standstill state. Mm. In in reverse, Mm. in a sense. Um, So my advice to you is to just keep going. You know, things are going to happen that that, that what the scripture that I said, um, your gifts will make room for you and place you in front of people. Yeah. Just trust that the Lord, of, the Lord's gift that He's given you, will make room for you. Yeah, in it's in the right time. Amen. Like the time, like we we wish, we wish the Lord would give us a, a strobe light <laughs> on that journey of life. Like yeah. we can see, oh man, yeah, I can see down two years from now, I'm gonna be in the NBA and I'm gonna do, oh yeah, you know. But God is like, nah, baby, nah, you can have this candle. Yeah, right here, you can have this candle. So that way you can trust me yeah. along the way, mm-hmm. one step at a time, one mm-hmm. step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. And what is that? I mean, it's that's the process of keep going, mm-hmm. no matter what. So trust good. In God. So good, brother. And I just love how you, you've touched on that a few times and it really encourages me because life is hard and, and life does provide potholes. It does provide those challenges and I think for so many young people, it's like, I'm just going to quit. I'm just not going to stay here because it's hard. And, and I think the reality is, is, is every journey is hard. You look at any character in the Bible. I'm, I'm reading through Genesis right now, and Joseph, right, is, is and I'm reading right now that he's in jail, and, and, the, and the, the chief cupbearer forgot about him, right? And he's like, man, like, I'm in this jail still. Like, what is God doing? I'm doing all the right things, and I'm just, I'm just getting hosed every single time. And you know, man, I, yeah. I think we blame God for those things. 
but in reality, he's, he's leading us where he wants us to go. And we got to trust him. And eventually, right, Joseph is second in command and, and he's serving his brothers or vice versa. They're serving him. Um, and, and, and he's at this place of leadership. And so I think we, we got to trust God on the journey, as you said, and just keep going. And just know that he's there. That's it. He's present. Yeah. Amen. Keep going in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I want to, actually, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, there's a scripture after, I think it's um, 7. Hmm. Do I have a um, Bible? I have a Bible. Let me read it. I just feel like I, I should read it. Yeah, 100%. Please do. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 3, 5, through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. That's five. Six. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Okay? Now, let's keep on reading. Because we always hear about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? Mm. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 3, 5, and 6. Okay. But let's read. Let's read. Ooh, let's read. Um, oh, my gosh. Let's read 1 through 5 quick. <laughs> my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days... And long life and peace will they add to you. Amen, Father. Hmm. Do not let mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Then it goes into, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Oh, my Lanta. Thank you, God. Yeah. We got to feel it. That first yes. part is huge. It's like a three-step process. Hmm. So step, step one is Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. Step 2 is Proverbs 3, uh, 5 through 6. Now let's listen to step 3. This is Proverbs 7, starting. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. It will be health to your body and strength to your bones. Mm -hmm. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your presses will uh will burst out with new wine holy macro bro it's amazing that, dude that's a three pro, three step pro no wonder the lord wanted it. the spirit mm. said read read this bro mm. that that's fantastic so just to reiterate like so the first step proverbs three one through three one through five uh, uh four second step proverbs three five through six five through six and step three proverbs uh three seven through 10 mm. oh my gosh i am highlighting all of this praise the lord praise amen the lord. bro praise the lord brother that's that's amazing it's amazing i love that the spirit put that on your heart it's encouraging <laughs> yeah moses and, and i really can't express just my gratitude for your support of the organization in so many ways uh, in support of me and uh yeah. I, I appreciate your time today i'm just i'm encouraged and blessed and I, don't, I know the listeners will be as well amen absolutely it's my honor man if you want to get involved with Uncommon Sports Group and the mission that we are on to help you navigate the sport industry as followers of Christ, apply for our academy on our website at uncommonsg.org. That's uncommonsg.org. Be sure to catch new episodes of the Uncommon Podcast every other week on Thursdays at midnight Eastern time. Until next time, we pray that you will strive to be uncommon by glorifying the name of God in whatever you may do. See you next time.